Hi everyone, welcome to MD BOD, your health live and on demand. I'm Dr. John Kennedy and today we're talking about colon cancer. Not counting skin cancers, colorectal cancer is the third most common cancer found in men and women in this country. And thanks to colorectal cancer screening, polyps can be found earlier, which means it's easier to cure and why the death rate from colon cancer has been going down for the past 15 years. But still, the risk of a man having colorectal cancer in his lifetime is about 1 in 19, and for women, it's still 1 in 20. As we do with every illness, we'll explain in simple terms what colon cancer is, who's at risk, what the dangers are, and the common symptoms. Later, I'll be joined by board-certified gastroenterologist Dr. Howard Schechter to discuss how we diagnose this condition, what he feels effective therapies are, and whether insurance covers the cost. So join us as we simplify what you need to know about colon cancer here on MDVOD, your health live and on demand. To have a thorough understanding of any disease, it always helps to know the anatomy. Our digestive system or gastrointestinal tract, which is responsible for processing food and nutrition, is a long cylindrical tube that starts with our mouth, then into our oropharynx, which continues into our swallowing tube or esophagus, then into our stomach, small intestine, and then large intestine, also known as our colon. Today, we're focusing on this part of our digestive tract, the large intestine, or colon, which is a large, wide muscular tube about five feet long. It's responsible for absorbing nutrients, water, vitamins, calcium, electrolytes like potassium, and it also serves as a storage place for waste matter. The waste matter moves from the colon into the rectum, the last six inches of the GI tract, and then passes waste out of our body. The colon is divided into five parts. The ascending colon, the transverse colon, the descending colon or downward colon, the sigmoid colon, which means like an S, and then the rectum. The smooth walls of the colon are known as the mucosa, and sometimes small growths can occur in the mucosa known as polyps, which can in some cases be the very early stages of cancer and can be removed before cancer spreads. Stay tuned and learn more about colon cancer. Welcome back to MDVOD, where we're talking about colon cancer, and we're joined here in the studio with gastroenterologist and colon cancer expert, Dr. Howard Schechter. Howard, welcome. Thanks, John. Thanks for being here. So, Howard, what, what is colon cancer? Well, colon cancer is an abnormal growth. It's really a malignant growth or tumor that can start anywhere from the rectum or in the colon. It usually happens after your age of 50 years of age. Okay. And, and colon cancer um, can start with a, a growth um, in our colon. Um, are are these, these growths known as polyps? Can you tell us a little bit about the difference between a polyp and a cancer? Right. A polyp is usually much smaller than a, a, a colon tumor. And if you look at a colon model, which I have here today, they look like little red bumps. And they can be anywhere in the colon. And this is what a polyp looks like. It can be small, flat, or it can look like a mushroom. And over time, over many years, it grows into a larger growth called a malignant growth, a tumor called a colon cancer. So um, are, there, are there people that are typically at risk for, for colon cancer? Anything that, that increases your likelihood of having that? Uh, first, age does. Okay. At age 50, we see a, a big jump in colon cancer. Uh, the average age is really 64. Hmm. People who have family histories hmm. are at higher risk of colon cancer. People who have not great lifestyles, uh, poor diet, drink too much alcohol, smoke cigarettes. Those are the major risk factors that increase your chance of getting colon cancer. Mm -hmm. So those are important points to make. Um, risk factors for colon cancer includes your age. You know, everyone um, that's 50 and older, the average age, as uh, Dr. Schechter pointed out, is 64. Um, if you have a family history of colon cancer, also 
uh, inflammatory bowel disease, ulcerative colitis and Crohn's disease. If you smoke and your diet, um, you know, your diet's really important. Uh, diets high in fat and red meat um, increase your risk. Um, once, once someone, uh, you've identified someone, Dr. Schechter, with colon cancer uh, or at risk for colon cancer, what are some of the, the diagnostic tests that you do uh, to help figure out if that's what in fact they have? Well, other than the history and blood tests and stool tests, the most important test is colonoscopy. Mm -hmm. And about 10 years ago, Congress passed a law saying that everybody's entitled to have a screening colonoscopy, mm -hmm. which is actually paid for by insurance. And that's what's really revolutionized our ability to cure people because we can catch colon cancer before it is a big tumor, before it spreads beyond the colon. Wow. So, so can you say that one more time? So Congress passed a law mm -hmm. that... Uh, that again? How? Yeah, Congress passed a law. Our society, the American Gastroenterology Association, put a lot of pressure on Congress to say, you know what? We need a, a better test than a stool test for blood or a sigmoidoscopy. We, we need a more thorough test that covers the whole colon. Wow. And, and the biggest uh, object was that people couldn't afford it. But now insurance covers the cost of colonoscopy. Wow. And so um, tell us more about this colonoscopy. What, what's involved? And uh, you told us about who's at risk and what age we should be um, sort of you know, learning about when we need a colonoscopy. What, what's involved with a colonoscopy? Right. Well, colonoscopy's really changed. I've been doing colonoscopy for 32 years. So when I first came out, we had these giant scopes, which were very inflexible. We didn't have really good techniques of sedating people. Now we have great medications to sedate people so you don't feel any discomfort. You don't, re don't even remember the test even. Mm -hmm. And we have wonderful high-tech scopes, just like on your TV, high-definition scopes. So when I scope somebody now, I can pick up tumors the size of a, of a pinhead, which I couldn't pick up before. And the scope wow. looks like this. And as you can see, it's a very soft, flexible scope. And it can't hurt you. And I, can, and I have controls here. I can bend in any direction. And you can see how flexible this is. It's amazing. I can get around any corner now. In the old days, I could not. Wow. And, and um, can, you, can you basically see, how small of a polyp can you detect with that scope? One millimeter. Wow. Wow, that's tiny. And uh, how long typically does a, does a colonoscopy take? It takes usually about 15 minutes to go from the rectum all the way around to the cecum, and you want to take about 10 or 15 minutes coming out. Mm -hmm. When you come out of the colon, that's your best look. That's when you actually pick up most polyps. So you want to have a colonoscopy that's done with, with carefully, of course, but slowly. Mm -hmm. Okay, and we passed over this uh, pretty quickly. Uh, w before someone gets to you, let's say they're at risk, they have a family history, for example, uh, for colon cancer, um, they get referred to you, uh, abnormal tests. Uh, what, what are the typical symptoms uh, that people have that, that have colon cancer? Right, the warning symptoms are people who have Persistent abdominal pain, blood in their stool, weight loss, fatigue, anemia. Those are the key symptoms. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, so abdo uh, persistent abdominal pain, uh, weight loss, um, and fatigue. Is the fatigue from the, from the anemia that, yes. that tends to okay, yes. prolong over time? Okay. Most people don't realize they're anemic. They just feel, I'm tired. Mm -hmm. That's, a, That's great advice. Um, and, and once, once um, uh, the, the colon cancer has been diagnosed, uh, Dr. Schechter, what, what are some of the therapies that, that are available? Right. So we have really good therapy, mainly because we're picking up colon cancer much earlier than before. So the best therapy is surgery to remove the tumor. If the tumor is spread beyond the colon, then we have good chemotherapy now, which is really helpful. Okay. And, um, and in some cases, um, there, there's radiation therapy. When would someone uh, receive radiation therapy for colon cancer? Uh, usually radiation therapy is reserved for people with rectal cancer. Okay. Because that's uh, where it's best used because it can control the tumor size. So the surgeon can get out the whole tumor. Mm -hmm. And um, what are some of the, the, the typical side effects that we see from, from someone that's gone through, let's say, chemotherapy and, uh, and surgery? Well, the main side effect of chemotherapy is, is again, fatigue, sometimes nausea. Um, sometimes they get anemic. But again, we have such great treatments for all these symptoms now that we didn't have before. So most patients do very well through chemotherapy and get through it easily. Um, that's, that's great, great, great advice. Um, 
What's really encouraging about, about colon cancer and um, you know, hearing from outstanding physicians like Dr. Schechter is that you know, colon cancer, unlike some, is actually declining. Um, why, why do you think that is, Dr. Schechter? Why do you think that we're seeing a lower rates of colon cancer today? That's a great question. People are more aware. People are more educated. We, we now have a study that came out this year for the first time over the past 10 years We've been scoping people that showed actually a decrease in colon cancer because we're screening people. Wow. The biggest problem is that we're not screening enough. Mm -hmm. We're only screening 40% of people. We need to get that rate up to 100%. So, you know, your so, shows like this and word of mouth, people are, are now getting into uh, the position now they, they want to have a colonoscopy. They're so, not scared of it anymore. So that's, incre that's an incredible point. Colon cancer is, is declining, but with better screening techniques like, like colonoscopy for people that are 50 and older um, is why we think we're seeing a decline. But Dr. Schechter points out that we're still not good enough. I mean, colon cancer might be a disease of the past if we continue um, with appropriate hypervigilant screening. Um, what, what, um, what else do you think is, is important? Do you think that it's us learning more about diet and exercise, or what else can we attribute these, these, these positive changes? I think to? all the healthy things that you mentioned before are crucial, but there's some new data coming out. Blood tests, which are, should come out soon, we actually uh, can screen people genetically. So if you have a blood test that shows you have six genes that predispose you to, cause, to colon cancer, you should have colonoscopy more frequent instead of every wow. five years or every 10 years, maybe every three years. So that's out there now. It'll be out soon. So that will change our approach to screening. Wow. So this, this new diagnostic uh, test to look at our genetic makeup to see if we're at risk for colon cancer may even lower this rate uh, even further. That's outstanding uh, information. And, and on that note, um, is there any new therapies coming down the pike that you see uh, that might be available soon? Uh, for people with colon cancer? I think the best therapy is prevention. So, so the best therapy is prevention, meaning you got to see people when they're 50. Absolutely. And, and again, what, what is, it, is it everybody that's 50 years old should have a colonoscopy? Yes. Okay. So it's important that everybody that's 50 should get a colonoscopy, you should see your doctor. And um, one, one of the questions I have is, um, what's the difference uh, between colonoscopy and sigmoidoscopy, and when, when would you use one or the other? Right. So, originally, we had flexible sigmoidoscopy. Now you got to get rid of your, your prop there. I'll bring back my other prop. Originally, when I was in training many years ago, we had something called rigid sigmoidoscopy, and that was no fun. That was a, a hard metal tube that we, had, that we had to insert in your rectum, which was very painful. Then came along flexible sigmoidoscopy, which is similar to the scope I just showed you, but it only went so far. It only went up the rectum and up the sigmoid stopped about here. Mm -hmm. So we're missing at least two-thirds of the colon, mm -hmm. where we know polyps hide, which can, learn, which can eventually turn into cancer. Mm -hmm. So we don't really use flexible sigmoidoscopy anymore, except you're, if you're concerned about hemorrhoids. Okay. Colonoscopy is really replaced flexible sigmoidoscopy. Okay, that's great, that's great information. Um, and, and when you have this colonoscopy, uh, which is you know, indicated for everyone over 50, I don't think we can say that enough because we're still only 40% there. Um, when you have it, what, what are the risks of the actual test? The risks are pretty rare because of the equipment is so much better, the anesthesia is so much better. Um, the main risk could be uh, you might have bleeding after a polypectomy. The risk of perforation is very rare. It's like 1 in 5,000 or 1 in 10,000, and that can be fixed right away. So the risk compared to the rewards are very much, much more in favor of having a screening colonoscopy. So uh, great advice. So way less than 1% complication rate. And again, um, we're seeing a decline in the numbers of colon cancers every year because of colonoscopy and uh, you know getting referred to your doctor appropriately. Um, you know, all of this you know treatment and diagnosis uh, for colon cancer, especially if we're recommending you know getting a colonoscopy um, for everyone that's over 50 uh, or 50 or older, um, can get expensive. Uh, you know, d does insurance typically cover the cost? Right. Most insurance plans pay for screening colonoscopy. 
It all depends on your deductible, things of that nature, but it's covered. Okay. So there's no excuse not to get your colonoscopy. All right. That's, a, that's again, a great advice. So there's really no excuse. Um, it's covered by insurance. Um, everybody over 50, we're seeing a decline in you know, colon cancer. Uh, anything else that you can think of, uh, Dr. Schechter, that you want to tell our audience that's important about colon cancer? I think the most important thing about your health is to meet with your doctor on a regular basis. Discuss these issues. Don't be afraid. The more you have an open discussion with your physician, the more you'll learn and be able to take better care of your health. You have to be in charge of your health. Wow, that's, that's incredible advice. Well, thank you. What a great take-home message. Um, thank you so much, Dr. Schechter, for joining us and telling us all about colon cancer. It's been great. And uh, don't, don't go away, uh, because up next on Apple A Day, we'll learn all sorts of ways you can prevent colon cancer. We're back with an apple a day and common sense tips to minimize your risk of colon cancer. When you're trying to prevent colon cancer, you can lower your risk by choosing what you eat. Make sure to cut back on red and processed meat, eat citrus fruits like oranges and lemons, and eat green leafy vegetables that are rich in vitamin B. Also, be careful with how much alcohol you consume and make sure to watch your weight. If you already have colon polyps or growths, it's especially important to stick to a low-fat diet. About one-third of adults who are middle-aged or older have colon polyps. Polyps aren't cancer, although they have the potential to develop into cancer, especially the ones known as adenomatous polyps. This is why your doctor will remove the polyps if any are found during your colonoscopy or sigmoidoscopy. And finally, most people associate smoking with lung cancer. But surprisingly, cigarettes are also tied to colon cancer. Smokers not only have a higher risk of developing colon cancer, but in fact, if you smoke and have colon cancer, you have a higher risk of dying from this disease. It's never too late to kick the habit. However, experts say that smoking in your teens and 20s is strongly linked to colon cancer. Be sure to stay on top of the latest news about colon cancer research at cdc.gov because the more knowledgeable you are, the healthier you will be. Thank you for joining us. I hope you found this information about colon cancer helpful. I'm Dr. John Kennedy, and you're watching MDVOD, your health live and on demand, here on empowerme.tv. And don't forget to like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and share us with your friends and family. And for any episodes you missed, Remember, they're all available on demand at EmpowerMe.tv's website and YouTube channel. Be sure to leave us your comments and questions so we can better help you understand the disease. See you next time on MDVOD.